Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, today I want to talk a bit about in terms of uh, spot rates and I want to discuss about in terms of forward rates and uh, with the other concept that we would be covering today is going to be the yield to maturity and we'll also be talking about in terms of the expected return Right. And we'll also be talking about in terms of the realized return. Right. This is what really trips out a lot of people in terms of uh, what it really is. So let's take a look at it. Uh, so first we want to talk about in terms of spot rates. Right. So what spot rate is, uh, it's an interest rate for today, right, for a specific period of time. So interest rate today right so for example if you talk about hey you know what uh, let's say there's a three-year spot rate of say three percent then this three percent is going to be the spot rate now with the help of spot rate we can also go and find out what's uh, so-called a discount factor is right so spot rate is really in terms of um, what is the rate that we'll be using to get the discount factor? So for example, if you want to go and find the discount factor, uh, there's going to be straightforward, 1 over 1 plus 1.03. And because it's for three years, uh, you do it three, and whatever that number is, that's going to be a discount factor. So that's a spot rate. <clears throat> now, when you talk about in terms of forward rates, Forward rates are derived using spot rates, right? So if we know that, you know what, uh, if the one-year rate is, say, 1%, the two-year rate is, say, 2%, three-year rate is, say, 3%, right? So if we draw a timeline over here, right? So year one, year two, year three. If we know the rates, uh, year one is 1%, year two is 2%, and year three is 3%, so we know these percentages. The question really is, can we tell, uh, let's say after the year one, what is the rate of this gonna be, right? So these are all spot rates underneath over here, and these are forward rates, right? So forward rate is, can we tell at the end of year one, uh, if you were to go and take a look at this particular bond, uh, what is the rate of gonna be over here for the, these two years? So the answer is yes, you can try to find out. What you're trying to use is going to be uh, in terms of there should really be no difference between whether I go and buy a bond over here or if I go out buy a bond over here. The main difference between the two bonds, if you want to go and calculate really is um, in terms of, so I'll use some uh, notations on here. So for the first year, this is 1 plus, uh, let's use the interest rate R and let's say this is R1. Right, so if we know what is 1 plus R1, this is R1, let's say this is R2, and this is R3. So in terms of to find out what is the total, so we take a look at the first total return, which is, uh, should be 1 plus R3. Now because this is over three years, it's gonna be three, and now this is over 1 plus R1, and then what we have to find over here is this. Right, so if you want to use uh, the annotations, you can let's say use x square. Right, so if we know the r1 is say 0 0.01, so we can do 1 plus uh, 0 0.01, 1 plus x square, or 1 plus 0 0.03 cube. Uh, you solve all this number, uh, let's say the number is, I'm just making the number up, let's say the number is 2. Right, uh, so this is going to be the rate over here. Right. Uh, now, in terms of understanding the notations of forward rate, right? The forward rate really is you're trying to find out. Uh, let's do the same thing okay, again over here. Right. So year one, year two, year three. So we know these rates, which is one percent, two percent, three percent, and now we found out. You know what? You know these two rates, which is the forward rate. 
and down here we're using the spot rates so forward is trying to tell us you know what one year from now if you were to go and buy the same bond in for two years what is the rate going to be so in terms of the annotations of forward rates uh what we always use uh, if you use if you take a look at the other books and all it's generally going to be stated as this which is t star is um the beginning i mean in terms of when are you looking to take the look at the bond right so t star is going to be over here which is when does the bond really going to begin so t star in this situation in our example is going to be one and t is going to be over here which is in terms of how much time it actually takes right so t is going to be two so f one over two is going to show you this which is it begins in one year and how long it is it is going to be for two years right so it starts in one year and it ends in two years right so that's how you do the annotations of the forward rates so if we know the spot rates it's really easy for us to go and uh, derive the forward uh, forward rates um, in terms of using the so that was the you calculating the spot rates and the forward rates now we know the forward rates and spot rates we can also go and try to use the pricing model right because at the end of the day if we know hey you know what the spot rate is say 1% uh, and if the spot rate is 1% for say one year then in terms of if you want to do the pricing of it the pricing on this is going to be 1 over 1 plus 0 0.01 and it's for one year so whatever the number you get that's going to be the price of it uh, same thing if you want to go and find uh, a forward model right a forward pricing model so same thing i mean if you know the same stuff one two three so we know the one percent we know the two percent we know the three percent and let's say you know what uh, we know so these are the spot rates and these are the forward rates if you want to go and find the forward pricing same theory I mean if let's say this is 1% and let's say this is X percent if you want to go and find out what is this going to be in terms of forward pricing you're going to use the same theory so whatever the discount rate is going to be over here so let's say if you want to find out the DF1 which is a discount rate is going to be 1 plus 0 0.01 uh, so if you want to find df2 it's going to be 1 over 1 plus 0 0.02 square because this is for two years if you want to go and find df3 uh that's going to be 1 over 1 plus 0 0.033 right so now you know the discount factors which is nothing but the price right that's the price um so that's the main theory on the spot rates and the forward rates uh the other thing that you want to talk about in terms of yield to maturity uh, so when you talk about yield to maturity uh, yield to maturity is weighted average spot rates now what does it really mean weighted means weighted based on cash flows right so let's say for example we know that you know what there's a par bond trading at say hundred dollars and we know the coupon uh, let's say the coupon is six percent so and it's semi-annual or let's say you know what let's say it's an annual coupon bond and let's say the uh, the bond is for two years so if you want to go and find a, a yield to maturity for a par bond at 100 bucks paying six percent coupon for two years all you do is you do uh, what happens in year one on year one you're going to receive 60 bucks um, and you're going to find the yield to maturity one and what happens in year two year two you're going to have not only are you going to get this hundred bucks you'll also get this six sorry this is not six this is six right Uh, in year two you're gonna get your principal back and you will get the coupon back uh, and the YTM is gonna be square because it's for two years uh, so now when you try to go and find uh, equal this amount what is the yield to maturity which reaches a par value so that's your yield to maturity 
Now, the yield to maturity can be equal to your spot rate, right? Can it be equal? Yes, it can be equal. Uh, however, there's three assumptions that is going to be made. Uh, three assumptions that you'll be making on here. Uh, first of all, is that the bond is actually held till maturity, right? If the bond is held in maturity, then that's one of the factors. Uh, the number two is that, you know what, the bond actually does pay the required coupon or principal payments, right? So it means there is no default risk. The third assumption you're making that, you know what, whatever the coupons that we are getting, uh, it can be reinvested at yield to maturity. So what do I mean? Uh, what I mean on here is if there is, if you're receiving a $6 coupon, uh, the only reason the yield to maturity is gonna be equal to spot rate is if you can actually reinvest this $6. So let's say YTM that we calculated, I'm just making up a number again. Let's say the YTM is say 5%. So this $6 can be reinvested at five bucks, right? And that's the yield to maturity. If that is true, then yield to maturity is gonna be the spot rate. Now, clearly, if you take a look at all these assumptions, um, a couple of things that you will find out is, you know what, the invest, reinvesting yield to maturity uh, cannot really happen, right? I mean, if the yield to maturity is at some weird number, say 4.54%, uh, not gonna happen, right? So this is really a big downfall in terms of is YTM equal to the spot rate? Uh, the other thing you also wanna take a look at in terms of uh, the interest rate risk, right? Because you are making an assumption that you know what, the interest rates don't really change. I mean, interest rates can change over time, right? So there's, there's always gonna be an interest rate risk. Right? Um, now, when you talk about um, realized return, an actual return, right? So realized return is, let's say we buy a five-year bond, and then we actually go and sell it for uh, our expected, so let's say this bond is trading at say 6%, uh, coupon being 100 bucks, right? Uh, so let's say our expected is say 4%, now, for some reason, even though it's a five-year bond, we decide to go and sell it at three years. If we go and sell it at three years, uh, it really depends on what the interest rate is at that point of time. Interest rate could be higher, interest rate could be lower, right? So interest rate um, could be, say, at, say, 5%. Sorry. Interest rate could be at, say, 3%, or interest rate could be at 6%. When we bought this bond, uh, we expect it to give 4%, but on the day of the, when you sell it at three years, it could be three or it could be six. So at that point of time, there is gonna be, uh, the bond price is gonna be higher or lower depending on which side it is. And hence, there's whatever return that you expect is gonna be the realized return, which is gonna include your coupon payments for three years, plus your realized uh, capital gain or capital loss. So that's the realized return actual return concept. Any questions, let me know. Have a good one.